to college to study architecture, but I was never really interested in what most people think of as architecture. Designing big, shiny skyscrapers, museums, stadiums. I was interested in people and the way we interact with the places that we live. I found out that studying architecture mostly means taking studio courses in which we practice form making how to design a form that communicates a specific idea and get this idea across in drawings, models, and computer graphics. It's architecture in a world that's a blank slate. And I understood that we had to start somewhere, so I had a lot of fun with these projects. In later classes, we were assigned sites to explore, so an actual context to fit our forms into. But I kept asking myself, where are the people? We'd visit a site once and, without talking to anyone who lived there, retreat back into our studios for the rest of the semester. This became a big question for me. All of these urgent problems are happening in the world. Climate change, poverty, conflict. How is architecture even relevant? So I was sitting in class one day and my TA was giving a presentation on some of his work that was very different. He told the story of a family who he was helping to build a house on a Native American reservation in North Dakota and all of the problems that came up. Problems accessing materials, problems with the family's health, problems with land ownership. All of these problems that were rooted in historic oppression. Problems that became architectural when the US government designated land and built these houses without an understanding of the way these people lived. His presentation hit me hard. When he finished, I had to step out of the classroom, get some water, and really put my life under examination. Here I was in college, studying architecture, gluing models together all night, and making an argument for how this particular form I had designed would make someone feel something. But what did it matter? How is this helping anything? And if I wasn't helping, then wasn't I just part of the problem? At this point in my college career, I had just applied to an architecture program in Denmark for the following spring. And I realized that this program wasn't going to answer my biggest questions. I wanted to get out of the studio and do real work in a community. So I made some calls and finally I told my parents that I was going to Chile instead to work with a friend who's an architect and build earth dome houses or something. I wasn't even sure yet. And <laughs> I don't remember exactly what their reaction was, but I think it was something like, okay. <laughs> so I went. I went to South America, and I didn't end up building any earth dome houses. But I did a lot of really amazing things and met some amazing people who I'd like to introduce to you now. This is Javier. Javier is one of the first people I met when I arrived in Santiago, Chile. I hardly spoke any Spanish, and Javier hardly spoke at all, so we got along really well. <laughs> Um, Javier lives in a home for people with intellectual disabilities. With the help of my friend's practice called Construyendo Identidad and the other residents of Javier's home, this is what we built together. The goal is to create a plaza with sculptures to interact with, places to sit, and most importantly, a way for Javier and the other residents to be productive and create a sense of ownership over their space. Ines lives in a social housing project outside Santiago with her two children. She's a partner of Un Techo para Chile, a nonprofit that I volunteered with later during my time in Santiago. Ines would make homemade donuts and calzones rotas every time we met with her and her neighbors. This was her existing housing block with many makeshift additions built by residents. Because the block had been adapted so much since it was first designed, our first step was to document current conditions. I made these technical drawings so that we could see the details of the space we were working with and propose renovations of the communal spaces. This plan shows the residence additions in red, which were actually encroaching on the communal areas and blurring the line between private and public space. So we proposed a new stair that would in, uh, improve safety and circulation to upper level apartments and create designated communal spaces for socializing and gardening. So we worked to visualize these possibilities for Ines and her neighbors, but ultimately it was the residents' responsibility to organize and support the project in order for Techo to receive the necessary funding. Alfonso I met by chance in a public park in La Paz, Bolivia. I was sketching when he came up beside me to see what I was doing, and I learned that he loved to draw too. I started to come to the park often and share art supplies with him and his friends. 
At this point, I had joined a program with a nonprofit called the International Design Clinic. And we were starting a project to build a mobile park for a local arts nonprofit. The drawings from Alfonso and his friends became an important piece of research, helping us to determine what was important to them in a park space. The drawings also told serious stories of the conflicts that were happening in the kids' neighborhoods. So here the drawings on the left and right show the children crying when part of their park was demolished. Based on the input from the children, this is the first prototype we built for the park. A playground built into a cart that could be moved around and deployed in whatever open space was available in their neighborhood. My time with these people taught me that successful projects are built on human relationships. They taught me that I can't just come into a new place and start designing before I set aside my expertise in order to listen and understand local ways of knowing and making sense of the world. What would our homes and cities be like if architects were not bound by commercial interests? Think about this for a minute. What would it look like? Would there be more sculptures and fewer corporate logos? Would our housing stock better fit our needs and budget? Would there be more parks, more space for kids, more space for people with special needs? What if architects could take the time to approach each project as listeners and learners first and experts second? What if they could use their expertise as leverage for the change that people identify in their own communities? We have public interest attorneys and public health practitioners. Why not public interest architects? Organizations like the ones I worked with in Chile and Bolivia are doing this work, and there are many more in the US and around the world with similar objectives. Despite economic downturns, organizations like these have been growing. Yet while graduates from architecture school have one of the highest unemployment rates, only 2% of architecture students plan on working for a nonprofit or community service organization. And I can understand why. Direct community engagement is something I have had to risk and seek out as a student. And it's easy for this work to remain superficial and one-sided when it takes place in a university setting. So I think there's progress to be made. This year, I'm testing out a new kind of design process much closer to home. I'm partnering with community members to carry out a collaborative ethnographic study, building a body of research to support the voices of public housing residents in an upcoming redevelopment process by recording stories that capture the history and strengths of the community, we hope to create a set of common goals that the residents can present to the developers and architects who become involved. College should be the time for students to ask harder questions of their profession and learn from the complicated, messy problems and insights that arise through working with people. If more equitable partnerships between architects, communities, and universities can be developed, I believe we can change the field of architecture from the ground up and have a huge impact on people's lives. Thank you.